if you can't transition from one section to another section and you beat it's either going to sound super boring and get super repetitive because everything's just the same all the way through or an artist isn't going to understand where the section has changed or the listener isn't going to understand where the section has changed either way it's all bad times here you need to learn how to transition from one section to another and this video is going to teach you exactly how the first thing you need to know is yo Aguan, hope you're having a great day in this video i'm going to be sharing some beat transition hacks i think i'm going to be sharing four of them but don't quote me on that whatever number it is might be in the title but the point is we're going to be showing you how to get from one section of the beat to another section of beat and make it sound cool okay so if you don't know who i am i'm jay carter ray from jaycarterray.com teaching you how to be better at music online business and online marketing. This is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't want to be starving eyes. So if that sounds like you, click on that subscribe button, check out the rest of the content on the channel because you will love it here, guaranteed. Now my question of the day is how do you usually transition into a new part of your beat? Let me know in the comment section down below because I'm assuming you've already got at least one way of doing it, right? Maybe you have no ways of doing it. And if that's the case, then say, I, I don't know how, but I'm going to be showing you a few different examples, okay? So let's quickly just play this beat. There are a few different examples of transitions in this beat. So I'll play the intro to the chorus to a little bit into the verse because we've got a transition from the chorus to the verse. And you can kind of hear a few different transitions and then we're going to walk through them and I'll teach you the difference and I'll teach you, you know, when you can use this transition or when I would use this transition, you can pretty much do whatever you want like with these transitions. There's no rules. You just need to know the basic rules so that you can break them, right? So let's play this back without any further ado. Hopefully it doesn't glitch up, but Honestly, that might happen in it, so expect that. Especially when you're moving from section to section, that's the thing that happens. But let me play it back. This is called Ray Cookie. Let's bring it back a little bit because of that transition drop and how it like cut out. All right, okay, you heard a few transitions. Let's get into it. Now, first of all, I actually missed the transition here. Usually I would have this, maybe I think this is like two bars. I'd have the drums cut off two bars before the synth bass pre-chorus. So let's just play this back for you so you can kind of hear what's going on here. So with this, you could have the 808s in there or you could take the 808s out. This is what it sounds like without them. It's up to you. Sometimes the 808s will stay in, sometimes you'll take them out. Depends on the song, depends on the type of vibe that you're going for. For this, I wanted to keep the 808s in, but I also just forgot to to get that transition in and to basically make the drums cut out so let's do this for all of these real quick now one of the most important factors 
in these transitions and why it you know all these transitions sound so great is because of the effects okay so we're gonna we're gonna go over that really fastly but that's gonna be the first thing that we're gonna go over because i feel that it's so important so let's quickly play this two bars from the intro to the beginning of the verse and you'll hear how this riser and this crash work so beautifully together to let you know that something's coming up and then something's here so let's listen back okay. Like it just sounds like it's a bit epic, innit? Now these partic these specific, this riser and this dropper was from the Cody free Reddit pack. I believe it's a free pack. As far as I know, it's a free pack. Um, I think he did a free pack for Reddit and I went on Reddit and grabbed it. I don't know if it was the pack. I don't know if it was the exact like post that he created, but someone else free uploaded it. I'm hoping it's a free pack that I didn't steal it from him, but this is the basic riser and the crash dropper from the Cody. I, I highly suggest this. I highly recommend them. I think they're great. Um, I haven't created my own, so I'm just going to keep on using these because they just work really, really well. And these are just what I use. Now with these, I'll use these for every transition. Okay. So transition from the intro to the verse, we got that there. Transition from the verse to the pre-chorus, we got that there. Transition from the pre-chorus to the chorus, we got that there. Transition from the chorus to the verse, we got that there, okay? And then it's just repeated over. So every big transition, we've got a riser to let you know something's about to come and a crash to let you know it's here, okay? And it's only in the big parts like you know, to the verse, to the pre-chorus, to the chorus, okay? It's not like uh, halfway through the verse, you're adding a riser and, and dropper. I don't think that would be a great thing to do, although you can try it out and see what happens. Now, in here, we do have a little transition from the, first of all, we got a transition just from the verse to the 808s. Uh, I like to spice up my 808s and have them come in a little bit weirdly so they're not coming in hitting on the the one of the bar they're just coming in wherever <laughs> i feel like it sometimes it'll be all the way over here it depends on the 808 pattern that i've got but here we've got the transition from the first four bars of this verse to the second four bars now what you need to know is every four bars in your beat you should be transitioning into something like something new should be happening now for example in this verse first two bars we don't have the 808 then the 808 comes in but then after that next four bars we've got the chord up which is a big difference it adds some melodic textures on there and you know that something new is here and the 808 is playing throughout the full of the full length of the last four bars so let's quickly play this back and you'll hear how the, the hi-hats cut out, which lets you know, okay, something's coming up because the hi-hats, I like to keep them very constant throughout my beat. Some people do different things with hi-hats. I just keep them very simple. They're just constant throughout the verses, throughout the choruses and whatnot. And then when we get to the second verse, we'll show you some different techniques that you can use over there. So first of all, the first, I don't know if we're in the first transition or whatever. I'm just going to give you a bunch of gems, basically. I'm not going to number them or anything like that, because what's the point? But first of all, cutting out drums, okay? Super, super simple. That's an easy way to get a transition. As you can see here, I cut out, I think this would be like one bar, because this is two bars. So yeah, this would be like maybe half a bar of the drums cutting out before the next section. It just lets you know, something's going on it's very it's a very very easy way to create a transition and it's something that i do a lot okay so that's the first basic transition i want you to learn so let's play this back real quick Thank you. 
that's a very very mild transition okay like it lets you know that something's coming up but it's not super super in your face another thing that you could do is basically just stop everything on the clap that's a transition i really really like so you'll have everything go to the clap and you'll just stop it on the clap right here so you can see the claps like right there if you play this you'll hear the effect that you'll get Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I cut out the clap. My bad, my bad. Let's bring it back. I really like that, especially in choruses. It does a great job in a chorus. Uh, let's show you an example. Let's come over here to the chorus. If we were to basically make everything stop at the clap, you'll hear a really, really nice little transition. Uh, we'll leave the kicks and the 808s in there for now, but we'll take them out after. Yeah, it's more impactful when there's no kicks or anything, so that's... Like you re it's like, wow, something stopped now, okay? We got some epicness coming up for the second half of the chorus, yeah? I love doing that, I love doing that. But because I did this on like a few of my previous beats, I didn't wanna overdo it and do it in every beat. But that, sauce, sauce. But if you use it too much, you might get lost in the sauce, so be careful, okay? Now, with my second verse, I like to switch up whatever I've done in the first verse. So as you can see in the first verse, I'll generally start with the hi-hats and the claps and all the drums, and then I'll bring in the 808 at some point like this. Sometimes I'll change it up, like uh, won't, nothing will start until the clap hits. So we can bring that over there and that will kind of give you an idea. But really I do it on the second clap because that's way too fast to do on the first clap. So we could go over there. But with this, I'd probably bring in my 808s first of all to just have some rhythm. But if you listen, like you can do stuff like that. Okay, so let's come over here and you'll see that I did actually basically wait until the clap hit for everything to come in but as you can see i've got the 808s here so i like with my second verse i like to have the 808s be there first and foremost because in the first verse i have them coming in at like an awkward time to just come out and no one hit you in the face like oh i didn't expect that coming from there and then in the second verse we start with the 808 so we have that rhythm going and we can bring in the other drums over time so let's listen to this real quick Let's actually bring it back a little bit so you have some context. Beautiful, beautiful. And the way this works is you have the 808s just playing as normal. And then let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it properly. Then basically what you want to do is you just want to make the hi-hats hit when the clap hits. So as you can see, uh, we don't have a clap straight away. Clap would be there. Second clap is here. So the second clap is better than the first clap is too quick. Like if you just do it right there, then you're not even, there's no build up at that point. But when you do the second clap, it has some build up. And if you make the hi-hat hit exactly when the second clap is hitting, it has a nice vibe to it. And we could have had all these drums, you know, just hitting over here and whatnot, to be honest. But I just decided to just make it go a little bit further back. So this is what it sounds like with all the drums hitting when the hi-hat hits. Yeah, but for this, I didn't think that was necessary. Let's bring everything back. And this is what it sounds like without all the drums. I just think that's a better vibe. It lets you know, okay, 
clap hit, then the hi-hats hit, and then later on, we've got the rest of the stuff coming in. And now, you know, at the second, second half of this four bar, everything's in basically. So that's that. Those are, I think four, maybe five, maybe three. <laughs> I don't know. At least four. I gave you at least four. I gave you the clap. I gave you the drums cut out. I gave you the hi-hat hitting at the clap. And I talked about the riser and drop effects. I believe that's four. I'm unsure if I showed you anything else, but there you go. Those are some beat transition hacks that you can use to transition from one section of your beat to another. This is going to help you out a ton and make it way easier for you to tell and for artists to tell and everyone who listens to your beats to tell where the different sections are because these are big signposts telling them, wow, there's another section coming up. Can't you hear the drums cutting out? We got new stuff going on, especially with the riser and the dropper. It lets you know definitely there's something going on, okay? So use this, yeah? Use this and let me know in the comment section down below which is your favorite out of these four beat transitions. Personally, I think mine would be the clap, but then I'd have to add in the clap with the hi-hats as well because those are like my my favorite like when you hit with the clap and everything cuts out like i showed you in the chorus and then over here when you hit with the clap and the hi-hats come in i love those yeah <laughs> those are my favorite right about now but let me know in the comment section down below okay now if you want to learn how to make your own trap beats from scratch i've got a free course that will walk you through the beginning of creating a beat all the way to the end i'll share my nine step easy trap beat making formula link down below go to jcartarray.com forward slash free trap course join that while it's still available it's absolutely free so you're not losing anything out and if you want to get your beat half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage link down below for my templates and all that sort of stuff but i think this will be a video that will help you out a lot if you've got any questions or any other tutorials that you'd like me to make please let me know in the comment section down below and in the next video you'll learn more about music online business and online marketing see you there peace out